This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be TV executives trying to program which shows are going on which days. We're going to be creating shows, we're going to be assigning talents to those shows, and we're trying to beat everybody else out on those certain days for ratings. Today we're talking about Prime Time. This is sort of a heavier Euro style game for two to four players. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes per player, so probably 90 minutes to two hours most of the time. Uh, so let's, let me show you how it's played, and I'll see you on the other side and tell you what I finally think. In prime time, you're going to be bidding and buying shows and talents, and you're going to be trying to put them on certain days of the week when certain demographics are going to try to get the best shows and the most points over the course of the game. The game's played over six rounds, and they'll be scoring on third and six rounds. Essentially, each of these is a season. Season one goes for three, the second season goes for three as well. Through a selection process, at the beginning of the game, every player is going to get two shows and get some specific money depending on the shows they took, and the, the money in this game are nice tiles. The game's played over four phases. The first phase, development, will be playing player actions. Each player has three actions they can select during this phase, and they're done in order from the order track. One of the actions you could take is bidding. You could bid on any of the talents or any of the shows. Notice some of them are gold and are worth more. Some of them are silver and specifically go on silver spots that are worth a little bit less. You can bid, but when you bid, you have to bid the minimum amount. So this guy, the minimum is 10. I could bid 10, I could bid more, but the minimum is 10, and then I basically place my $10 here. Now, somebody else could come up uh, on, a, uh, on this phase and bid something higher, like 12. Purple would get his $10 back, and Gray would then put his 12, and this player does not get his bid marker back. It's stuck for the rest of the turn, but I'll show you it's not terribly bad. You have to do other things with it later. Now, there's some other action spots you can go to other than bidding. Remember, you get three actions per turn. Any amount of players can go here. Essentially, that person spends a dollar, and it's R&D. Essentially, it will allow them to mess with player turn order at the end, but as many players can go here as they want. Purple could go here, spend a dollar, and at the end, this is going to get resolved top down, so the latest person that goes here will get higher up on the turn order. Archives is only for two spots. Essentially, when somebody goes here, it gets you a rerun, which essentially will allow you to get any of these demographic uh, cubes on here. It's basically a one-time show that will get you a a little bit of money. A golf course you could go here and just get one point and the points essentially are on the, the edge of the, the board there. HR essentially as many people as you want can go there. If you have a talent that you're not going to use you can put them face down for this entire season which is basically three rounds or up to the end of the third or sixth round and uh, basically you'll get a dollar if it's uh, a silver person or four dollars essentially getting money for someone that you don't think you're going to use. PR this is a main action of the game here there's only two spots three if there's more than two players. Now when you go to PR here's forecasts here's the days of the week this these cubes are showing you demographics uh, like blue is for males pink this is supposed to be pink it looks like orange is for females uh, green is for families for example black is wild they're couch potatoes they'll watch anything this is the demographics that are on each of these nights that you're going to be placing these shows and talents on at the end of this phase and so this is what's currently here but uh, what you can do is pr allows you to either take one of these uh, forecast cubes and just add it to any night normally they'd go to a specific night so you could just add it there or instead of doing that you could actually take any cube from one and put it to a different night. You could also swap. So if this wasn't here, uh, maybe I want to swap uh, this green with this. So it allows you to change the demographics in the game. After everyone's placed their three uh, markers, essentially we resolve bidding going from left to right, top to bottom. So here this player, nobody outbid him, so he basically gets to put his money in the bank and take this and put it in front of himself. Here, Gray is the one that ended up winning this one. He would, this money would then go to the bank and he would grab this. Now this player was outbid. If anybody else was outbid, you'd resolve all of them the way we just showed. And then players that were outbid get to either grab any of the talents or shows and you can go the lowest price. This is kind of cool. Uh, let's say you could get this. The minimum this is eight, but if you're outbid, you could actually get this for four and just grab it. Also, if you didn't want to get someone else, you can also place your outbid marker on any of the open action spaces that are there. But usually it's best to take somebody cheaper than you normally would be able to get them. We then resolve turn order. Let's say on the R&D, orange 
was on top of purple. So essentially orange would flop like that. Then we move on to the broadcast phase. The first thing that happens is in this row, the lowest row possible, these are gonna go in each of the five days. So this blue is gonna come over to Monday, this black wild cut tails Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so you can look ahead and see which cubes are gonna be going on to which days if, <laughs> of course, this can always be changed by the PR motions. Then in turn order, you're gonna do schedule submissions. So uh, essentially everyone's gonna build their week. So let's say that this player puts Space Quest on Monday along with a, uh, a talent. Let's say this player goes here for Tuesday and let's say he puts his rerun on Thursday. Everyone will put their shows and, and or talents up there and they will basically do that and then it will be the next player's turn in turn order. Once they're here, they're stuck for the round. In subsequent rounds, you can move things around but once they're here, you put them all down and then we go on to further. Then we go to a ratings war where it's for each day you're going to go through and find out who has the primary demographic Q potential. And how we do that is any stars, here we have two, and if any talent matches the right kind. So this is Space Quest, it's a science fiction show. This talent is also really good at science fiction. So each talent that matches this is a, essentially a star. So here on Monday I have three stars. We would compare that on Monday with everybody else. Let's say I had the most. I would get to get three cubes before anybody else. If another player had one star, then I would get a first cube, they would get a cube, and I'd get the last two because you basically go in turn order and you get as many cubes as as many stars as you have or star power. So let's say there was one other player that had one star power on Monday and I had three. Essentially, I would get to get, let's say I'm first, I would get the, uh, I'd grab this and put it maybe here. And then somebody else would grab one of these, if he could place it and place it. And then because I had two more stars of them, I would get to place the next two. Now, if there were more cubes at this point, we would start in turn order, and we, everybody would be able to get take one cube for Monday. But at the beginning of the game, there's not a lot of cubes there. Uh, we would do the same of this for every single day until everyone has in sort of uh, priority order, then turn order, but able to take all of the cubes and place them on their talents or shows. Now you can see on my Monday, I was able to place my two blue cubes here and black, if you remember, is wild. It's a couch potato, they'll watch anything. And so I just put it there. Now let's, we do this for all the days and it's the, it, it, after that happens, we look at any shows uh, that did not have even one cube, and the rerun can take any, any show that did not have any cubes gets canceled and is completely lost. So this show, if it had no cubes, would be completely lost and it would be, boom, out of the game. But let's just say we did get one cube here just to show you how things work out. Now, if I had a talent here that got none, but it's not canceled, this would flip over, and this player would be flipped over to the end of the season, which is, again, at the end of every third or sixth round. If a show did get canceled uh, and this went away, you get a rerun in your hand for a future turn to use as sort of a consolation. Next, we look to see if we got any client tokens. So these people are willing to give you a certain amount of money if you attract a certain amount of demographics throughout your week. So essentially, if we had one, two, three, four women, pink cubes, and, and one of the uh, the browns, you would get this for $6. And early in the game, you're not gonna have its total cubes throughout the week. If you could get this, you would get it. Uh, if two people get it, essentially whoever does it earlier in the week, finishes it early in the week, would get that. Next we see if anybody gets a variety token and they get that by having one show of each of the different types, whether it's drama or sci-fi or reality or, or, or crime and so on and so forth. Each player then looks at the total number amount of cubes of demographics they got, one, two, three, four, five for me. And I would go up to five on the hotness track. If I was already at five, I would stay. If I was at six, I would stay. You only move up if you go up further. At this point, if it was the end of the third or the sixth round, we'd have an awards ceremony. We'll skip that for now. We'll come back to that at the end. Each player would now receive income. $2 for every cube. So two, four, six, eight. I would receive $10. And everyone's cubes would go back to the same day they came from and keep making sure that everyone stays the same there. And then we'd do some cleanup. You'd take all your pieces back. You'd clear all these out. You'd put all new one out there. Then you see if any of your shows go off the air. This shows six discs, six rounds essentially. This show will stay on the entire game because the game is six rounds. This show has one. This only stays for one round and then it's gone. It's a one-time show. So this show would be gone and it'd be gone for the rest of the game. If I had a show here that was this, it's three, which means it stays for a whole season. This would stay to the end of the third or the end of the sixth round there. If it was in the third round, we'd score this with some uh, scoring and then it would be discarded. Well, let's say it was the end of the third round and go over what one of the scorings happens, how it works on the end of the third or sixth round. 
you'd get one point for every token you're ahead of on the hotness track. The show with the most talent attached to it would get three points, two for the next, and one for the next, and you start to split them if you're tied. Everyone submits their best show, which essentially is your star power. Again, this one has one, two stars, plus one more for matching. I have three. The one with the highest star power would uh, get th uh, three points, and then two, and then one. Same way breaking ties before, you split the points. Each variety token is worth a point. And then we score these boardroom cards. There's three boardroom people, and they change throughout the game and throughout future games. This guy says whoever has the most money is going to get five points, then three, and then one. This player, uh, this boardroom, basically says whoever, if you have a certain amount of stars that are turned over uh, from talent, you'll get a certain amount of points depending on the amount of stars you have turned over. And this guy is however many, uh, if you have at least one show in each of these genres, you'd get a certain amount of points depending on that. That's generally it. There's a lot of other little rules, but this is generally how it's played. After the end of the sixth round, you do another one of those scorings that I just showed you. Everyone gets uh, $3 as a point, and at the end, whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, well, there is prime time. Now, I was interested in this one because I love the theme. I mean, the theme is what really makes this game tick. Now, let me first tell you what the things that I liked about the game. The artwork is awesome. The characters, the, the shows, even the flavor text with them, uh, artwork's awesome. The, the theme, the, this is the biggest thing with the game. Almost all the mechanisms that you're using in this game, where you're bidding on talent, or whether you're going to R&D for turn order, or PR, and messing with, with, with who's on each side of the demographics, and, and, and then placing shows that will attract the demographics, and the better shows with the better people, and the more stars are gonna get more ratings first, and it's sort of drafting through that, and everything thematically fits, and I really, really liked that about this game. Um, so overall, the theme fits so well that it, it's, it, it just makes you go, wow, this is cool. Euro games typically don't have as much theme, this does. Uh, now let's start to go into some of the things that probably could have been improved. The rule book uh, doesn't mention anything about the colored cubes, which is odd because it's such a thematic game, but I looked online and uh, apparently they were supposed to be in there, but they were left out. But on, on BoardGameGeek.com, you can look at you know the colored cubes, green for family, blue for, for males, pinks for females, and once you have that thematic part, it helps fit the type of things that you're looking at, but there's a mistake leaving those out. The pink cubes look very orangey or peach. They're not really pink, and so a little bit of a production issue there, I think, um, for that. But for, from the rest of the production side, things are good. I, I would have really liked to either had a player aid, or even the back of the rule book should have had just a one-page summary, one-line summary, and a little bit of summaries of each of the steps, as opposed to having to literally walk through the rule book uh, for your first couple of games, going through each of the phases, making sure you're not missing anything. Player aid or summary on the rulebook would have been big there. Now, for the gameplay itself, the mechanics are quite simple. They're not too overly bearing. Uh, things sort of flow in a, in, in a natural fashion. Um, and then you get to the part where I think the thing starts to drag down. And this is the part, probably the part I disliked about the game the most is that when you when it's time to set your lineup, there's so much to think about. Even going up to that, you have the forecast cubes. You have people messing with those demographics with the PR cubes. You have cards, you know which ones you're trying to put on which days. That might change depending on what people do at PR. And the first player, okay, he thinks about it for a little bit, a little while, and he puts his shows out. And then everybody else is like, the next player gets to look at what they did, and I found that this tended to bring a game to a little bit of a grinding halt, especially in the players I play with don't typically have a lot of AP, analysis paralysis, but this game, this part of the game in, really induces that because you're sitting there and you're, you're looking at what they're gonna have. And you're like, well, if I put this here, I'll probably get two cubes on this one, his star power, my star power. But if I put it here, I could do this, but then that won't go there. And like every player, it almost compounds. First player, it's hard, but you put it out. Second player, you got one person to look at. Third player, like, oh my gosh, I got these two guys to think about. And if I do this, then he'll do this, and he'll do this. If you try to optimize, if I mean, if you're trying to win, you're this, you're truly really trying to optimize, make sure none of your shows get canceled, make sure you get one cube. It's pretty huge to make sure you get at least one cube. So a lot of thought has to go into where you're placing them. And unfortunately, with every player after that, after the first, the second, and the fourth, it takes longer and longer and longer. And that part really dragged the game down for us. Uh, and it's one of the reasons that I didn't end up really loving the game is because of that AP potential and the way it dragged down the game. I liked a lot of the other aspects. I liked how some cards give you, you know, they're one round things. They're like one show. Some of them are good for one season. Some are good for both seasons all the way through the game. I like that. I like trying to match up the icons. Um, so there's a lot to like about this game, but unfortunately in the end, it was sort of a brain melt, which isn't bad in a sense because it's not heavy, but it's a heavy thinking game, which I also like. It's just unfortunately that thinking had to happen in serial because you had to wait to see what other players did. And then unfortunately it just dragged the game down to, to a pace that, that made the game longer than I felt it should. 
So overall, great effort, great artwork, great components, great great thematics, good things. But in the end, unfortunately, the game doesn't add up to better than the sum of its parts for me. Uh, and that's prime time. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.